around the uh, the mid 1980s, there was a change, and the new prototypic DSP system looked at first blush way more complicated. We still had the analog world, but now we measure a um, a potential, say a voltage potential, uh, through sensors, and we put it through an anti-aliasing filter. And our goal with the anti-aliasing filter is to prevent this aliasing that'll occur for any frequencies that are greater than F sub S over two. So it's gonna be a low pass filter, which passes only frequencies less than F sub S over two. Now, the bad news is that we still need to do that using EE230 principles. You still gotta do that using resistors and capacitors, possibly op amps, because you, you can't do it in the digital world. Once you've taken it into the analog to digital converter, and once it's aliased, it's impossible to get rid of the aliasing. Then we bring it into our A to D converter. We use a microcontroller or a computer to do all of our work with it. We bring it out through a digital to analog converter. We put it through something called a reconstruction filter that I'll explain in a second. The re end result is that it is the exact same as our anti-aliasing filter. It's a low pass filter, which passes only frequencies less than FS over two. And again, it's something built using EE230 principles. And now we take that result and we bring it back to the analog world. So at first blush, this seems so much more complicated than what we did before. But the reason why we do this complexity is that the A to D converters a solved problem. The D to A converter is a solved problem. They're embedded within most microcontroller chips now. And if they're not, it's just a simple one chip solution. And the beauty of this has to do with the fact that now this microcontroller holds our code and it is so easy to change. Uh, last class, you developed your filters using using the filter designer. We've talked in earlier classes, really simple ways that you can design the filter coefficients on the fly for, for specific order, FIR and, and, and IIR filters, very low order. We just did it for second order. The math gets unbelievably complex for higher order. You have to use, you have to use MATLAB. But I want to talk about what this, these different steps in the system look like in the time domain and in the frequency domain. I'm going to firstly show in the time domain. After the analog to digital converter, we're now in the discrete domain. So now it's versus N. And now we're after the digital to analog, we're back in the time domain. And the horizontal axis corresponds to whatever line in our block diagram is, is directly above it. Okay. We start off with sensor data, some high frequency, some low frequency. We put it through our anti-aliasing filter and we get something that looks like this. After our A to D converter, we get something that shows we get something that you can see the outline of our original signal on, follows it through. We do some sort of processing. It changes our input signal to something else. I don't know what it is. Let's say it's that. Then it goes to the digital to analog filter. And you can see that after the going through the digital analog filter, the best it can do is just sort of draw straight lines between the points. After the reconstruction filter, it smooths out those points. And then that's the resulting signal that's passed on to the analog world. To see what's going on in the, it really going on, let's take a look at this in the frequency domain. This is X in the frequency domain. And of course, that's going to be a complex value. It's going to have magnitude and angle. So I'm just going to draw, draw the magnitudes of all these things. Once we go into the frequency domain, I'm going to have to choose some other axis and I'm going to go with the DTFT. We've processed it here. We're going to get a different DTFT. Now we've gone back to the frequency domain, and here's our final signal, ready to go out into the real world. And I think if I was a little bit more clever, I might have said this is our X sub 1. After aliasing, it's X sub 2 of T. Now it's X sub 3 of N, X sub 4 of N. This would be our X sub 5 of T, and our X sub 6 of T. And we could label all these guys down here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this would be X sub one, two, three, four, five, and six. It just follows down vertically. Now, in the frequency domain, let's say that it's, let's say we start off getting something that looks like this, where this is our F sub S over two, and this is our F sub s, and it continues on infinitely long to the right. So after our anti-aliasing filter, all of a sudden we just have our, we just have this and everything 
to the right of that has been made zero. By the way, you know that you'd see a mirror image to the left. After we convert that into the discrete domain, this fs over two turns into our pi, still looks the same though. Now you know that it will also replicate over here. It'll replicate over and over and over. So this is what we put into our microcontroller. Let's say our microcontroller changes it around. After processing, it looks like this. So it'll have to look like this. And down here, this would be at two pi. Then that would be at three pi, goes on the left side. Okay, when you convert it back into the analog domain, we have the same infinite number of, of repeats that, that, that occurred because we converted over into the discrete domain orig originally. So this is now occurring at fs over two. This is at fs, this would be three fs over two. That would be two fs. We've got mirror images on the left as well. And that's where we need that reconstruction filter. In the time domain, you can see it just sort of, it, it rounds off the edges, but in the continuous frequency, you can see what it does is it preserves just that one image that matches to what we had in our, in our discrete domain and everything else is zero. So the takeaway there, there's obviously a mirror image. So the takeaway there is that if you ever hear about what is an anti-aliasing filter or what is there about a reconstruction filter, and hint, you will definitely hear about that on the, on the final exam and probably on the FE. And if you go to grad school, definitely in grad school, just know it's they're both low pass filters at FS over two, and that set solves the um, the problem. In the real world, it's more complicated than that, right? Because you you can't have a a perfect brick wall filter at FS over two. So you probably want to design a filter that cuts out frequencies with a cutoff less than FS over two. So by FS over two, the the pass is so small that you're okay that whatever gets through it ends up getting alias down because it's so small, it doesn't matter.